Oh, welcome to the 1875 podcast. We are back again after the international break. Um, we have Millwall to review and then we'll look forward to quite a busy month. We're, well, end of the month and then start of um, October. We've got three games to look at in this episode and uh, also an exciting free agent signing that we'll talk about shortly. Um, firstly, uh, unfortunately, Matt Holden has left the podcast and he's gone on to uh, to pursue other avenues. Um, but I just want to say it, it was a pleasure doing this podcast with him um, and I appreciate him stepping in when I was away as well. So I just wanted to uh, put a little mention to, to Matt Holden. Obviously, he was a, a big part of the podcast. Um, so thank you very much, Matt, if you're listening to this. So, um, this week we have um, Alex with us. Welcome, Alex. Thanks for having me, Lee. No problem. Uh, how are you doing this week? I think the week's always better after a win on the Saturday, <laughs> so uh, I'm not doing too bad. I'm not doing too bad, thanks. Um, so, we, we'll start with that one. Obviously, three at the back. Were you surprised when the team sheet was announced? Yeah, I was. All I can say is thank God for Rich Short's formation uh, photograph on his Twitter account because <laughs> I'd have been spending all the period of time in the ground up to kick off trying to work out where everyone was going to play. Looking at the team sheet, it was a bit bizarre. Um, but yeah, it, it did really surprise me. But then having thought about it, I, Marbury has dabbled with the three at the back in the past and it's never really worked out. And I thought that maybe if he'd spent two weeks on it over the international break with none of our players going away on duty, that apart from Corey Evans, that we'd have you know, a good chance to maybe get everyone on the training ground and working on a specific system that he maybe wanted to implement. So, <laughs> yeah, I, w- I was surprised. Uh, but equally, when, when I thought about it, it, there were signs that it, he may move to that in the future. So... It, on second thoughts, not as shocking as as the initial what as the initial thought really. Do you think it paid off going with that back three? Do you think that was um, like a major part in the in the result? I would probably say no because I think no is probably too simple of an answer to that question. But I think partially in the sense that I don't think Millwall really tested Walton in our goal very much. So I suppose you could say that the five at the back when you're when you're defending contributed to that. So I suppose you could put that point forward. Equally, I don't think, especially in the first half, I thought that Millwall probably shared in it um, before we went to a more conventional four-two-three-one that we've been used to seeing, and then we started to dominate the game and create you know a lot of chances and test their keeper and really in the end we probably could have had three or four more goals than the than the goals we actually scored in the end so I think I think with Marbury taking it out of this game he'll probably be thinking that doing it in training against your own reserve team is a lot different than doing it in the championship against a first 11 that are well drilled and have got a system of their own that they've been you know, playing for you know months, if not years. So, it if if he does persist with it, it's going to take a lot of patience, I think, to get where we want to get with it. Yeah, like like you said, you thought Millwall shared it in the in the first half. Would you agree that in the first half we kept the ball a lot, but did very little with it? Yeah, yeah, I would go along with that. It was very much pass, pass, pass around the back four. Uh, pass back to the keeper, pass back to the fullback, pass back, pass back, pass across. It was very repetitive and predictable and quite slow. And I think Marbury did, you know, echo that, you know, opinion in his post-match presser. Um, it seemed that really we didn't have the full confidence in the system going out and playing. There was just that maybe that nagging doubt you could see in the players in the sense that they weren't fully committing to playing out from the back, so they'd maybe do three or four passes, and then if they weren't getting any openings, they'd then, you know, 
almost throw out the frustrations and hit it long. But the problem with that was that <laughs> the people we had at the top of the pitch were Armstrong and Dak, who aren't the <laughs> tallest players. So off, often that didn't exactly pay off and we gave the ball straight back to Millwall. And that allowed them to b- probably build up, I would say, 10 or 15 minutes worth of decent pressure on our defensive third of the pitch. But luckily we didn't we didn't concede, uh, which is encouraging. Do you think ultimately it was with the back three, don't push forward too much and get caught out? Do you think that's why they were very um, slow in building up, that they didn't want to just fly forward and get caught out? I think that's one of the reasons. I think in the past we have been guilty of giving the ball away in our own final third and that's really cost us, especially in away games at last season, you know, when maybe we conceded one goal and then another and another may follow very quickly after if we lost concentration. Yeah. Um, I think at home we're a much different outfit than we are away in terms of our defending. I think even last year we had one of the best... I think we were in the top six for fewest goals conceded at home last year, which, thinking about it, is bizarre because we all go on about our terrible <laughs> defence. But it was it was pre- pre- pretty much all away goals conceded, really, that was the big problem. I think, I think if I boiled it down to one thing, it would probably be the uncertainty of the new system. Yeah. And in addition to that, I don't think really that Bombing forward is is the, really the natural game of the centre backs that we do have. I know that um, Williams has obviously played at you know full back for a couple of seasons, and then he said that he wanted to be recognised as a full centre half. But he still doesn't maybe look to bomb forward maybe too far out of his own final third, and neither does Lenehan really. And I think that's probably a consequence of. Yeah, I think maybe Marbury at the end of last season did obviously go on about the defence and it won't surprise me if he's told them to maybe stay compact and don't leave their own final third. Yeah. Um, I think maybe that's one of the only reasons I can think of that why that would be. But yeah, they did seem to be playing quite deep and didn't really exactly have the confidence to maybe beat one of the Millwall attackers and play a forward pass to really get, you know, relieve the pressure. So, And obviously, a, a stunning goal from, from Williams when he ventured forward a little bit. It's, it's one of yeah, them you're screaming yeah, for excellent. him to hit it, weren't you? When it come to him. I know I was. I was squinting, but I wasn't squinting for very long because of the speed of the ball. Um, <clears throat> I think with Williams, it's a case of confidence, and I think we've seen that all that the three years that he's been playing for Rovers, really, that he had a quite a good run in the relegation season and he ended up getting player of the year, which I think a lot of people forget. Yeah. Um, not that we should have given out an award that season, but there you <laughs> go. Um, so we did get player of, the, player of the year that year. And um, I remember him chipping in with one or two goals at important times. And I think it's great that, you know, he got his goal at Hull from the set piece and he's had the confidence to take take on that shot on Saturday I think if anything we suffer from not scoring enough goals from outside the box you know I look at often on a Saturday night after after all the games have finished I often watch the goals show and the number of goals scored from outside the box is ridiculous really when you think about it and I, I've always thought to myself for quite a while that why do we never do that why do we never take on a shot from outside the box? Yeah, you know, especially if if you're playing a team like Millwall, who try and camp in their own half and make it very difficult, you know, to break them down. Often it does take a moment like that to open up the game. So it really does surprise me that. But yeah, again after the match, Marbury said that that's something he's looking for. That you know, all the defenders and all the players in general, you know, throughout the team. Yeah. to have the confidence to take on a shot from long range, I think. I, I would say we've been trending in the right direction. You know, Travis scored one from outside the box at the end of last season. I think Bradley Johnson's been very unlucky at Hull. He hit the bar, didn't he, from a long shot. So, yeah, we, we're trying more than we used to. Let, let's 
just put it like that, which is encouraging. I just hope it keeps paying off. Yep. Score more goals like that. <laughs> yeah, you just got to have a go every now and again, aren't you? Um, and some of them flying like that, and some of them going to top tier. Um, right, so exciting news. Um, we are going to be signing a player. I think it's uh, all but confirmed now with uh, Lewis Holtby coming um, from... He, he was, was in Germany, but he was a free agent. I'm not quite sure when he was released, do you know? Was he, was he released in the summer? I think he was released in the summer, yeah, and he apparently I did read that he had he had actually trained with Rovers this summer at, at one stage, but right. which was never really reported in the Lancashire Telegraph. But I have read somewhere I can't remember exactly where it was, but that he had actually trained with Rovers this summer for a period. Oh, that's interesting. And that um, and that Marbury was very impressed with what he saw. It's strange um, it's taken this long then if if, if he's trained with us. You've got to think that he was holding out for maybe another deal in, in Germany or yeah, maybe. perhaps. I did see a rumour that uh, he was meant to be going to Besiktas, but maybe that didn't work out for whatever reason. So Yeah, yeah, maybe it was, I don't know, bigger club, European football maybe. Um, but he hasn't played since the 4th of April, in the, which was in the Bundesliga 2 uh, for Hamburg. So he's not played for quite a while, or from what I've confined anyway, competitive football. Um, so do you think it's going to take him a little while just to to maybe break into the side, regaining fitness, etc.? I think it all depends on how disciplined he's been while he's not been playing. You know, if you often I find it that it is can be used as a bit of a convenient excuse um, for not being fit. I think if you're in my opinion, as someone who isn't in football or working in football, that would love to be. That if you're a, if you're good enough to be a professional footballer and you're a free agent, that you should be busting a gut to get fit to make sure that a club signs you, and that you wouldn't um, not put in the hard yards and making sure that you are fit. Well, they always said that, they, they always say the fitness and there's match fitness, isn't there? So they, that's yeah, that is definitely that's definitely true. Um, he met, yeah let's just wait and see I think as I was going to say that I think when you look at the case of maybe Stuart Downing who didn't really get a lot of minutes at the end of last season because of the contract situation at Middlesbrough and you look at how professional he's been in keeping himself fit and ticking over yeah, and he's then gone into this season and he looks 25 rather than 35 <laughs> And and that's not really a hesitation because I can tell you that we in the last few years we've had a lot of players that have looked like they're 35 and they've been 25. <laughs> uh, it's been the opposite way around with Downing, and he's shown a lot of commitment to you know make me move into it. What he would probably deem as a smaller club than his own hometown club because he likes to big them up and staying professional and staying fit and staying ready to be picked. Um, I just thought that if Marbury is making the decision to sign a free agent, that it's that it's that thing with Rovers fans that we're very wary of being stung again like we were with Murphy and the two who and many others in that era after relegation. So let's just hope that we're signing a good character, that we're signing a player that can improve the team, most importantly. And that, you know, he, he really is here to play football improve himself and raise his profile again because uh, that can only help Rovers really yeah and I think for for Hamburg and the other teams that he's played for he's, he's sort of played in the in, in an attacking midfield role sort of in Dax position uh, and uh, I think less frequently out wide um, so we, we'll probably see him playing in that front three uh, obviously challenging the likes of, of Armstrong, Gallagher, maybe even Dak. Do you see him taking Dak's place? Can anyone personally, take Dak's place? Personally, no, I don't think he will take Dak's place. I think from what I've read they've um, of Holtby, they've described him more as a number eight than a number ten. So I, I don't know whether the Marlborough has the confidence to play 
a player that that is that is that creative in the centre midfield. Um, I know he was reluctant to play Harrison Reed there last season. Um, in you know in the centre midfield, however, yeah. he he did play he did play John Buckley there on Saturday in the centre midfield, and I don't think I'd have had the confidence to pick Buckley to play in a full frost championship game from the start in in central midfield. So we'll have to wait and see. He may even he may even be starting next to Travis in central midfield, you know. Or Bradley Johnson. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. There's a lot of options for that position though, aren't there? There's you've got Buckley thrown in there now. Um obviously still Evans, although I don't think he's even in with a shout of getting game time. Um Davenport, I don't know whether he'll ever make an appearance. He seems to get injured every time he, he gets close. Um, yeah. Like we Smallwood. said, Smallwood. Smallwood, yeah. Like we said before, you you said he he likes his midfielders, does Mowbray. Um, I just kind of hope he finds a pair or, or whatever his plan is for for Holtby. Um, he does tend to he, he scores about half a dozen goals on average ish a, a season. Um, so obviously Mowbray's going to be hoping, as you mentioned earlier, he's going to chip in with a couple of goals throughout the season. Yeah, definitely. Well, if he scores half a dozen goals from central midfield a season, then it's half a dozen more per season than any of our midfielders have scored <laughs> for the last five or six seasons. Um, it seems. I think with Mowbray, I think one thing you probably could accuse him of is not really having an idea what his best team is. And I think that's probably going to be highlighted over the next two or three months leading up to Christmas. You know, who does he go with in central midfield? Does he carry on playing the five at the back every week and get tossing in the side? Can he drop Williams after in, with the form he's in? He can't drop Lennon because he's probably our best player other than Dak. Um, you know, he's got an assortment of options on the wings. You know, does he go with Rothwell, Armstrong, Downing? Gallagher, you know, does Graham does Graham start or does he not? You know, there's so many permutations that are going to be playing out over the next few months, and I really don't think Marbury has any idea of what his best team is, what his best eleven is. I think, so I think it can be good and bad. That I don't think there's too much difference in between some of the players fighting for, for positions, so it can obviously push them on to play better, to try and keep that position or to get in the team. Um, do you know what I mean? I don't I don't think there's I'll, massive gaps between the people fighting for in, in terms of talent. I will go along with that. And I think in, in one way that means that if ever one player does dip off in form, that there's another player of similar quality sitting on the bench waiting to come into the team. I think if I do reflect maybe on the past... 18 months Mowbray's maybe been a bit over loyal to certain players which has you know resulted in quite a sudden shift when we have recruited it's been almost a very harsh sort of change in the way we play rather than a gradual progression um, for example with like Amari Bell you know he's, he's playing every week then suddenly Cunningham comes in and he can't even make the 18 you know it's a very Sudden change in circumstance for you know for certain players. Do you think he's just um, trying to get that team in that he wants? Obviously, he had to deal with, he's had to deal with what he had in League One, and he got a couple of players to help us out. Obviously, we didn't have a massive, um, like we couldn't stretch ourselves too much. You know, probably just in case we didn't make it up. Um, and now he's got this little bit of money, um, and now he's trying to put the pieces together. And obviously, some of them people like Smallwood and Bell just aren't good enough for what Mowbray wants to do. I, I will go along with that. I also think that it may be in the back of Mowbray's mind, he's possibly thinking that if we don't go up this season or we don't make a very good go of going up, you know, is this going to be Dax last season? I hope it isn't, but is it going to be? Is it going to be Lennon's last season? You know, Cunningham and Tossin will return to their parent clubs. Can we get them back on permanent deals? 
So I think maybe in Marbury's mind, he might be thinking that this is possibly our best shot of going up when you look at the league in general. I can probably only see two or three teams that really stand out. And I think the rest of it's wide open. I think if you look at the league table now and you see Preston in fifth place or sixth place or wherever they are, I think personally, you know, without wearing my blue and white spectacles, <laughs> that that we've got a better squad than Preston. And so I've, I see no reason why we shouldn't be finishing above them this season. And if they're currently in the top six, I see no reason why we can't get there if we play to our potential. So you you honestly so, think that we could we could make a push this season then? We'll have to be lucky with injuries. I think there's no way we'll get in if we have Lennon or Dak out for any period of time. I think it needs to be, as with every team in the league, a bit of luck with injuries, a bit of luck with suspensions, a couple of the young players maybe improving as the course of the season, you know, goes on. You know, we might, you know, Joe Rothwell for the rest of this season might explode, you know, score, you know, five to ten goals. You never know what can happen. So I think we've got as good a chance as anybody in, you know, the rest of the top ten, top twelve, really. I don't think we should be discounting ourselves. I think I, I was quite reserved before the start of the season. I wanted, I think I predicted twelfth actually. At the uh, before a ball was kicked, and I think looking at the games we've played, I think we've probably played a batch of fixtures that are quite difficult, and we've come out in mid-table. Now that makes mm. me think that if we have a batch of easier games, now I know we're talking about Rovers here, and they never do. Yeah, we've probably way. played the easy games, and the hard games are to come. <laughs> yeah. For us, that we've that we yeah for us, but we've probably played. You know, we've gone away to Fulham and West Brom, which I think are probably two of the toughest three games we'll play all season. Hmm. Um, I I'll probably say we've only really had one clangor of a result, which was the first opening day. Um, but it, but other than it that, wasn't really though, is it? Because Charlton have gone it. on to. I mean, Charlton have done quite good this season, so. Up, up to press we have, but I, I have actually kept an eye on a lot of the stats from the games, and <laughs> I think there was one game where they won one nil at home, and they had three shots to the opposition's twenty-eight or something yeah. ridiculous, and they won one nil. Still I think three points. It is still three points, and it'll be three points until May. But <laughs> I, I think that over the course of the season, we may see them. Dropping down the table. Oh yeah. Anything. Yeah, I would have thought so. Um, but I do. We just had a long championship chat, then, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we've we've gone well off. Um, we were talking about Holtby before. <laughs> we've gone well off. Um, but yeah, I I agree with what you're saying. We've had some tough games. You know, we we're, we're still in the middle of the pack. Um. But then you look at it as Rovers normally do all right against the good teams, and we still go against the you know the likes of the people at the bottom of the league. Um, but I, I seem to I feel like the tide's changing for us. Like we're we're breaking some of them old moulds, and hopefully that's going to be one of them where we stop struggling against the the, uh, the poor team, the poor teams in form sort of thing, not the bad teams. Because, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But I do agree with what you're saying. If we if we can keep form, we I think the big thing is we need to f- find ways to to score against teams because sometimes we struggle. Um, so yeah. Yeah, there has been games this year where we have struggled to maybe carve out that one one golden opportunity, you know, to take the chance and win one nil. If anything, it's probably a symptom of playing a bit more of a conservative style after conceding all those goals last year. Maybe yeah. it's a bit of a reaction and we've maybe gone slightly too far the other way, but you can't really complain when we've kept four clean sheets in the last five games. No, so. it's, it's good. Um, so let's look at the fifth clean sheet in, uh, upcoming <laughs> against Reading. Hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> I probably just jinxed it. Um 
So we go away to Reading this weekend. Uh, Reading the 17th at the moment. They've only won two and they've lost four from seven. Uh, the only two they've won were against relegated Huddersfield and Cardiff, and they've failed to score in the last two games, uh, which were defeats to Borough and Charlton, uh, two teams that we've already played this season. Do you see him keeping the back three for Reading, going away to Reading? Mm, it's... I have a feeling he might stay with it, yeah, I do. I think when you look at... I don't think he can drop Williams or Lenehan. No. And I have this nagging feeling in the back of my mind that we agreed with Man City to play tossing a certain number of games this season. You know, with these ridiculous Premier League lawn <laughs> demands that they set out. Um, he's not. A, I don't know, think he's the, a bad player. The no, games I've seen him in, he's been I, comfortable. I, I don't think he is either. I was actually quite impressed with him against Millwall. Um, and, I, and I know that fans at Digos and Fulham away game were impressed with him then as well. Um, but I have a feeling that he might persist with it. I don't think he can justify paying a long fee for Tossin and then not playing him. Yeah. So I think he will play. I think he will include Tossin. And because Tossin said that he doesn't want to be considered as a right back, that means that we'll be playing three centre backs. And as a result, we'll be playing the five at the back. So. Yeah, let's just hope it's a continual improvement and a continual work in progress and that we can maybe function at a slightly uh, better level than we did on Saturday. I think we'll need to because I think Reading away will be a tougher ask than the wall at home. So, yeah, it's one of those, it's one of those things that Mowbray has shocked us before at two o'clock on a Saturday. There's <laughs> no reason why I can't do that again. You know, we might play four three three for all I know, but yeah, I I do have a feeling that he may, he may stick with it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Will well, I do a little um, like live podcasting before the game, before home games, and I said, I think I said something like, I like I expect the the same sort of team as as West Brom with Williams and Lenny Han. Cunningham, Bennett. I said, but this Morbury we're talking about, I fully expect a few like um, surprises, but I did not expect him to come out with three at the back and then Will Buckley and for, <laughs> yeah. for Lewis Travis. So yeah. you just never know. Go away to Reading. It's hard to change a team that's won, though, isn't it? I think that's the other thing. Um, it is hard to change a winning team, but it must be said that Morbury. You know, stated after the game that although he was pleased with the result, he wasn't pleased with the performance, especially in the first half. Yeah. And, you know, he can obviously see that the system does need a lot of work. It's not easy to go from a system, a flat 4 2 3 1, that you very rarely changed over the past two or three seasons to then doing quite a radical change overnight over a space of two weeks that it won't be smooth sailing at the beginning so yeah I have a feel. I have a feeling that in his mind he's committed to playing this three at the back now and I think he'll persist with it yeah it's, it's like he's <clears throat> he's had another week now hasn't he another week of training with the players in, in that formation now the, uh, <clears throat> uh, I think you'd be tempted to go away to Reading and go back to what you know Go back to a really safe option. But if you do that, you go away to Reading, you do a full week then of training the old formation, and then think, right, we'll go home and we'll play at three at the back. So then that's a week of training the new formation. It's going to be easier for them to, to, to just stick out the rough patch of maybe getting used to this formation, isn't it, I think, rather than switching for every other week, surely. Yeah, I think in the modern day, with a modern day footballer, a lot of. Uh, stories that I've read about managers getting sacked it's often started when a manager has invested a lot of time and effort on the training pitch into one system and set of principles and then the minute that one result change you know a one-off result and they completely change the whole philosophy and uh, system that they've been putting hours and hours into on the training pitch overnight and 
it can just demoralise the squad. So I think, I think he's in his mind. I think Marbury's committed to this three at the back now, and I think he will stick with it. But what do I know? What do I know? <laughs> well, I think you said earlier it's always looked like he was sort of leaning towards three at the back. He wanted to to go that way. Um... He ha- he has he has tinkered with it. I think it was the Doncaster home game at the start of the league one season. And yeah. we, it was an absolute disaster and we <laughs> lost 3-1. And it was such a bad performance and a bad reaction from the crowd that he went back to basics um, in the next game away at Bradford and we got the win 1-0. And we never really looked back from then on, did we? <laughs> I, think, yeah. I, think we only, I think we only lost four out of the next 44 games. <laughs> so, uh, to an extent... I think he's always wanted to play three at the back or five at the back, whatever you want to call it, at Rovers. But I just don't think he's had the personnel to do that. Yeah. But I think we're bringing Tossin in and Williams being in the form of his life. I'd, I don't think he'll have a better chance to implement it than he does now, yeah. to be honest. So loan all your centre-backs out and then play more centre-backs than you've ever played in one game before. <laughs> the- it's typical manager's logic. <laughs> yeah. So, the next game, uh, another week of training with three at the back, and then we'll face Luton at home. Um, interested this, I think. Uh, they started strong, and I think it must... i uh, be honest, I don't know much, much about the season, but I remember winning the first game, or a really good game, the first game, won it against Middlesbrough, I think. Um... But yeah, it was the Friday night game to open the season. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was an excellent game. Yeah, it was. Um, well, they are currently sitting sixteenth in the league, just one place against our uh, our opponents this weekend. Um, and like Reading, they've only won two and they've lost four. Um, but they are also a joint second most goals in the league. Um, and also have the third most goals conceded, so we could see a couple of goals against Luton if we if we can break them down. Yeah, I think that game will be an interesting one. Like I said, I don't really know much about Luton. The the rise has been very rapid, obviously, from League Two straight into League One, and then straight into the Championship. So it's been a very quick progression. Um, so I think there'll be a lot of unknown players on the pitch for Rovers fans in particular I think it's probably best not to in that game in, you know in particular to let frustrations build up if we're if, you know maybe if we're struggling to break them down or we're drawing after maybe 60 or 70 minutes not to let the frustration seep out and just carry on carry on back in the team till the end um, but I don't think I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be Looking forward to playing Luton at home. I think if we've got any aspirations of even getting close to the top six, I don't think we should be fearing any home game. No, you know, oh. I think I think really we should be aiming to win every single home match, and really we should be close to winning every home match. You know, we might lose a game two one or one nil to a Leeds or a West Brom, but we should be going into every home game with the mentality. Of what we are going to win this, you know, and we are good enough to win this. So I don't really see any reason why we shouldn't be expecting that from the Luton game. You know, you've highlighted that they do concede a lot of goals. So let's just hope that our forwards can carry on, you know, what they did on Saturday against Millwall, where we created a lot of chances, and let's just hope we can put them away. Yeah. Yeah, they. I think we're probably strong at the back, so we we'll maybe keep them out. Um, it'd be great if we can get two clean sheets out of them as well. That'd be really good. Um, but like you said, another home game coming up. Um, one that I always think I don't look forward to these games because I don't remember a good one, if I'm honest. Against Forest on Tuesday the first. Um, Forest are currently tenth, having only lost one, uh, drawn three, won three. Uh, they haven't lost since the opening day against West Brom, and the three draws came against the top five with Preston, Charlton, and Leeds. 
Um, Forest have scored one goal in five of the seven games, so they're not scoring lots of goals, um, but they're keeping clean sheets and making sure they do put one on the scoreboard. It's going to be a tough one, this um, Alex. So you, what do you reckon? Do you reckon we can win this one? I reckon we can win it, and the reason, the only reason I say that, and I don't want to curse us at this stage is that I don't think we've got a bad record against Forest at all. I think when I look at the fixtures that we played against them, even when we were much lower down in the league and we had a lot worse prospects than we do now, Forest was always a game that I thought we could win. I think in the relegation season, I, I remember a horrible midweek game that we won 2-1. Uh, and it probably give Coyle another month or two, but... <laughs> in the job but um, it's, for some reason Forest is never a game I fear I never fear playing Forest at all and I think over the past few seasons I think they they do like to play quite an open style of play they never come to Ewood and try and spoil the game they come and play like they're a big club and try and you know open the game out and you know beat us by scoring you know, multiple goals. So I don't, I, don't, I don't really see us having too many issues against Forest if the defence stays as it is currently. Yeah. You know, well, we haven't beat them at home since 2013. Um, and in that season, we beat them on the home and the way leg, and we haven't won since then. Since January 14, um, we've drawn four and lost four. Against Forest. Is that at Ewood or away? That's well? totally that's home and away. Um, well, we we beat we beat them at the end of last season two one, didn't we? With Roth, I'm sure Roth. No, well. they beat us. Oh, is this away? Oh, I might be looking. Oh, it's done me over. Yeah, ignore me. Stupid thing. This is Forest side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's Forest <laughs> record against us. Yeah, so... And, it, and it's not good, is it? It's not no, good. we have beat them four times in, uh, and drawn. So they haven't beat us since 2014. Yeah, so it's a fixture that we usually quite enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, we a good record against them. So as, as I alluded to with Luton, I think with our home games, we've got absolutely nothing to fear. And we should go into every home game expecting to really give the opposition a tough test. So let's just hope we can, you know, we can do that in both those games. I think if we do get four points from those two home games, that you know that wouldn't be a bad situation to be in. I think after after the Forest game, we'll have played ten, won't we? Um, yeah. And if we're Anything above maybe 16, 17 points by then, we'll be in really good shape, I think. So what what do you expect from all three? What it says? Oh, is Matt Holt going away to Reading? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Because if he is, that's a home banker. <laughs> um... Go on, right. So I'll I'll do two. I'll I'll do two predictions. So if if Matt Holt's going away to Reading, which he may well be because he went last year, then we'll get beat. <laughs> if he doesn't go, then I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to go for a two-one win. Uh, Luton, I think we'll win. I think we'll win that maybe. 3-1, something like that. Um, I think them throwing caution to the wind, they may grab a goal out of nothing, but I think with their defence, we may put them under too much pressure on the day. And I think Forrest might be a draw. So I'll, I'll, go, with, I'll go with seven points if Matt Holt stays away. <laughs> well, I'm going I'm to... Assuming Tom isn't here this week, I'm, I'm going to take over Tom. Um... I'll take a point against Reading. Um, I'll take a point against Forest, uh, and a win against Luton. So we'll, we'll have five points. I th- I think that's a good. 
and that'll leave us with 15 points after 10 games yeah yeah and then... which is probably just below where we need to be if we want top six but I think not I, that far I think they're all winnable um, at the moment, I'm just unsure. What, like, like we spoke about the the formation and and how well it's gonna turn out. So, do you see um, Holtby featuring uh, Holtby Holtby featuring in any of these three games? Mm, that's a difficult question. I think I really don't know to what extent he is fit or he isn't fit. Um, I think we'll probably only find that out if or when he signs and Mowbray does his interview and explains his rationale for signing him. <laughs> he'll probably go through the situation. Um, my initial impression will be that you probably not know. I probably don't think we'll see him until after the next international break. And that's which is, October Is that sometime? in the middle of October? So... I don't think we. I don't think we'll see him maybe until late October, early November, in my opinion. But just in time for Leeds away, so. Oh. Um, <laughs> that might be his first game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just yeah. So the the last game is the fifth of October, and then the next one's the nineteenth. Yeah. They're both away. Um. Yeah, so we've only got, what, four more games before the next international break? I always find the start of the season, the first few months, very stop-start. Yeah. And then probably after the middle of November, it's uninterrupted football until, like, March. It's just pure football, club football, and it's non-stop. Yeah. So that period between November and February, March is just really important. I think... At this period, when it's a bit bitty with the fixture list, you just got to stay, try and be as consistent as you can. And I think the fact that we've not got many going on international duty helps us and gives us an advantage over others. It gives us uh, more time to work on on uh, you know things on the training ground like we saw on Saturday. So I, th- I think I think we're in decent shape. I think we're in much better shape than I thought we were after the Fulham defeat and I think we've made steady progression since then so let's just hope we keep keep on that path we are on the up that is the main thing we are improving and progressing in in many different areas um, and obviously still adding to the squad when when we can um, so I think things are only looking up at the moment we're definitely not going the other way which is good um, so yeah, I think, I think that's it. We've looked at the three games. We're positive we're gonna we're gonna come out with some points. <laughs> um, Famous last words. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So yeah, uh, we'll be back in two weeks uh, reviewing these three games and then looking forward to to probably just the QPR one at that point and then the the international break. We'll be here again. Uh, and hopefully we we may even see Holtby by then. Uh, who knows? But thanks very much, Alex, for for coming on. No problem, Lee. No problem. It's uh, it's been a pleasure, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed listening to this episode of the 1875 podcast. Obviously, I haven't mentioned up to now, but obviously you can read all the previews of these games. Uh, leading up to the to the game that week uh, and obviously you can read the review of Reading if you want to on rovischat.com uh, and then obviously go over to the Twitter if you haven't already which I'm sure you have at rovers underscore chat uh, and follow the, the Twitter but that's, that's going to be all for this week thanks very much for listening thank you Alex for coming on uh, and we'll see you again in two weeks time